everybody, and welcome to the Everything VoiceOver Podcast. My name is Justin D. Torres. The Everything VoiceOver Podcast is brought to you by The Voice Realm, where only professional voice actors are listed. All right, today on the podcast, we're going to be talking about Reaper. This is a, an editing system for voiceover artists for actually any kind of audio, whether it be uh, music, not so much video because you can't put a video on there, but for audio, basically, Reaper is the editing system for people who want to be voiceover actors. And I'm going to give you a few reasons why and a few uh, few different uh, um, possibilities as far as alternatives go. But first, I want to tell you that this podcast is basically about about Reaper and why I think every voiceover actor should start using it right away and should toss out the old audacity because and and invest in this type of uh this type of uh editing system now first and foremost uh this is not <laughs> i'm not going to give you a reference number at the end this is just me uh, i'm using reaper right now to record this podcast i think it's a great great setup uh so uh yeah let's get started now there used to be a few options available a few avenues available for editors uh back in the day and even still now there are the number one is the big one audacity that's free software that's out there. Anyone can download it. It's a good, very simple software. Uh, the other one is Adobe Audition. Now, Adobe Audition, Adobe makes all the other stuff like the Photoshop, Illustrator. Um, yeah, they used to make live motion, just really well designed software. But unfortunately, it's like really complicated software. Uh, unfortunately, it's not really gauged towards the uh, the newbie to this, and not that Reaper is not complicated. It's just that uh, Adobe Audition is more gauged towards the you know the music maker and all these uh, all the others. Audition is not necessarily it's from what I've uh, from the few times I've used it, I have been confused, and I I've only utilized it for recording at some point, and then I would edit it somewhere else, but I. Uh, I don't really enjoy, I wasn't a really big fan of Adobe Audition. And then the other avenue you had, if you were on a Mac, you'd be using GarageBand, which I heard a lot of people, especially new kids, would be using GarageBand. Uh, or if you were a pro and if you were lucky enough to be an editor, a full-time editor, you'd be using something like Pro Tools or Avid. But that's more like for people who already use, already are proficient in editing. And sometimes you had people like me who already, who realized that audio editing is just video editing without the video. So I used video editors. I used uh, Sony Vegas Video for, for the longest time because I, I knew how to edit video. Uh because I, I went to school for uh, film and I was typical, I was using digital, I was editing digital films a lot. So I, I used, I used my video editor and it worked perfectly for the longest time. And then recently, and I don't know how old Reaper is or Twisted Wave, but recently these two editors came up, Twisted Wave for Mac and Reaper. And now Twisted Wave I hear is amazing. I, I even heard they have like a, uh, a punch and roll function, which, um, uh, for those of you who don't know punch and roll, now this is hard for me because I don't use it. I don't use punch and roll because my microphone is in, in, in a closet and I have to come outside of the closet to edit. So punch and roll really works better if you have your microphone here because punch and roll is a, a matter of you hitting a button and then pressing, hitting, you make a mistake and you're like, oh, I messed up. Then you just like hit a button and it goes back like five seconds or so. And then you hear yourself and then you just go right into recording again. And that's great. Uh, unfortunately, it's not really good for me to go outside of outside of my uh, of my studio, outside of my recording studio, hit a button, come back in, and put on all this stuff all the way all put on the headphones and everything, and then just try and catch up to where I was talking. It's actually painful. If you were at your computer, then a punch and roll function is great, which I hear that Twisted Wave has. I don't use punch and roll, so it's not really useful in my situation. I hear Reaper has a, a punch and roll function, but like I said, I don't use it, so you're not talking to an expert here. But I use a Reaper. Now, what's so darn good about Reaper? Well, first off, I've got to give major props to Booth Junkie. And Booth Junkie is uh, Mike Delgadio. And uh, if you go to uh, YouTube and look up Booth Junkie, B-O-O-T-H, Junkie, J-U-N-K-I-E, um, I'm pretty sure that's the way you spell it, um, as you should be able to get it, like voiceover Booth Junkie. Um, and it's a video channel on YouTube. It's run by Mike Delgadio, and he is the man when it comes to voiceover tech stuff. 
and and you know he explains things very easily and he has a whole series on how to learn reaper and things you should set up in reaper to make it easier to to make it more functional for the voiceover artist and i went through it step by step every second by second and i set up my system and i'm so much more of a, of a speedier editor because of it. I'm so thankful. So if you're listening out there, Mike Delgadio, thank you so much. And I hope everyone who's listening here, if you do take on the Reaper concept, go off to go off to a uh, booth junkie and start using their tutorials. Cause you know, like if you're using, like if you p- type in, if you type in audacity voiceover recording, you're going to get a million different things. And some of them are going to be good. Some of them are just going to be talking about painful things. Some, some are going to be talking about, um, you know, mistakes and errors. Same with uh, Adobe Audition. You're going to get a thousand things. But luckily for us, we have a, a tutorial that's available for us right away, specifically by this guy, Booth Junkie. And uh, it's worth going to just, just to check out. And he's the tops when it comes to tech side of VO. Uh, I would put him right up there with all the rest of the good guys like George Whittem as well. And all those uh, VO body shop guys. It's uh, They're amazing. But let's go ahead and talk turkey here. Reaper is a pro system and it should be on par with Adobe Audition and Pro Tools. And when it comes to usage for a VO, let's, let's, let's think about, uh, let's think of it. Let's talk about money. Adobe Audition costs about $20 per month, just for the, just for the, uh, usage of the software. I did see something online about it being like 200 to $300 for like nonprofit use. And I don't know what that means. But uh, if you go to the Adobe website, they're charging $20 a month for the one application, or you could have all the applications of Adobe for $40 a month. Uh, unfortunately, I don't need all the applications of Adobe, I, and plus I'm not a big fan of Adobe Audition. So what is Reaper? Reaper is $60 total. I don't know how much Pro Tools is. I don't, I don't want to know how much Pro Tools is. I, I'm pretty sure Pro Tools, you have to buy like specific, uh, like hardware. Anyway, like for Reaper, it's a $60 for the total license and you can use it forever. And the updates are free that come with it until they make like a Reaper 2 or something like that, which they haven't done because this thing works so well. It also works hand in hand with Source Connect, which is a, um, which is like one of those top higher end uh, VO guys have to, to interact with clients so they can hear you directly through Source Connect and it, a, a Reaper, if you type in how to use Reaper with Source Connect, there are plenty of really good tutorials on that too. So it's already got like a connected in specifically with uh, with with voiceover. Now, if you go over to Booth Junkie, there's videos that will walk you through how to set up Reaper. So you've got this in-depth tutorial that exists specifically for VO. Now, uh, here's, here's another thing about editors. When it comes to bells and whistles, you know, the, you don't need any of that stuff. You don't want reverb. You don't want to have more little things that make you sound like a robot or anything crazy that's like if the, you know, I mean, I was looking at something that had like make you sound like a radio guy, and but it's not like a radio guy. It's like an old timey radio guy. And that's not really useful to any of us. I mean, we are not sound engineers. We are voiceover artists and we're trying to get the voice to someone who is a sound engineer so that they can do whatever they want to do to the project itself. All we want to do is get the audio onto the computer and then out to the MP3. Now, if that's the situation, it's like, why, why, why do I need, why do I need to buy a Reaper? Uh, I, I could use Audacity and it's free and it is free and it does work. However, here's a couple of things. Audacity is error prone, seriously error prone. It's so error prone that um, since it's a free software, there's no like customer service for it because you're not paying for it. So what the way you find out what's going on is you usually type in you know, into Google and then you see all these millions of people who have the problem and then you try and figure out how to get it, how to get to the thing fixed. It's just a whole entire community dedicated to fixing audio uh, audacity problems. If you go to the Facebook and if you go to the Facebook audacity group, there's tons of people who actually lose audio. They'll record whole 20 minute sessions. Then suddenly like there's this red dot that pops up, says uh, something went wrong and then you lost everything. I'm not saying that that doesn't happen with Reaper, but it almost never has. I don't think I've ever had a problem where I've lost everything in Reaper. I've actually had a system where I thought I lost everything with Reaper. And then I looked back and I just, I found it. I figured out where to find it. 
Uh, also, the problem with Audacity, you get little glitches and bleeps and blips, and I don't know, there's snaps, and I don't know if it's like how how Audacity works with the, the operating system, and also, like, if your uh, operating system is updating every now and then, Audacity is not updating with your operating system. Audacity is not doing the... Th it will... It's very likely that the more the more you update, the the newer the operating system, the newer computer, the harder Audacity is going to be to to work with. And here's another fun little aspect. I actually helped someone get their uh, Audacity up and running, and I realized that you actually have to download a codec to get the MP3. You know, it's it's uh, and that codec is not available, so you have to get like an old codec from another place on Google in order to get that onto Audacity so that Audacity can render out to MP3, because Audacity will only render out to WAV files. So I was like, why it's, why do I, what, what is this? And luckily I found it and we were able to out, out you know, out render out to an MP3. But that is a pretty big pain, but also it's free. So what, we can't really complain too much, can we? Um, whereas those problems do not happen with Reaper as well. Well, now's a good time to say that the Everything VoiceOver podcast is brought to you by the Voice Realm, where only professional voice actors are listed. Now, why is Reaper so good? Well, number one, it's cheaper than all the big boys. We're talking about the Pro Tools and all the Avids and the... And I think that like FL Loops and like uh, there's FL Studios probably on the same price range and those ones, but I, I've, I've never used them. I've been a Reaper person. I, I have tutorials for it. I have no need for another editing system. Now here's a cool thing that Reaper has, and these are the, these these are specifically uh, put in when, if you if you uh, check out Booth Junkie and Mike Delgadio and all this great stuff. They have they have Reaper has hot key functions and an action list that's filled with hundreds and thousands of little actions. And what Delgadio has done is figure out which actions you need as a voice of ours, and he selected them out, and then you assign those buttons to whatever you want the the button to be. So I can select items like they're little blocks. I can select two or three and hit delete, and then it'll be gone. Those specific items will be deleted. I can drag my mouse over a section and hit a certain button, and it'll delete only the the section which my mouse was dragged over, which is very different than highlighting specific parts. Because highlighting is just hitting between the two spaces of cuts. Now, it used to be back when I was in editing, I would have to slice a side and slice another side and then cut the middle. With this little situ situation with hotkey functions, I don't have to do that. I can just kind of eyeball where the breath is. And this is specifically for breaths because I can tell visually where the breaths are. I'm sure you can even tell if I if you if you look, you can see where every breath is. It's smaller than it's smaller than the words. And it's, and it's bigger than when there's nothing. And that's pretty much going to be a breath, 90% of the time. Um, you can name a selection with the click of a button. You can, you can actually section out and name a section of, of that, that might be represented by an audition. It might be represented by a module that you've been uh, that you've been uh, working on. So I can section out this whole section, like from uh, module one to the uh, end of module one, before module two, and then call name that region module two, module one, and then the next region from the start of module two to the end of module two, call that module two. And I can render all the regions at the end. As long as they're in the same file that I'm working with, I can render all those regions with the click of one button. I do not have to save over and over again and rename over and over again. And now that's well, the major reason why that's so good is because of the regions function. Now I keep saying region. Now what is a region? It's, uh, it's a section, right? So uh, if I did 20 auditions all the way through, I have one audition for, let's say, Petco and the other audition for, say, Hyundai. So the section of the audition uh, for Petco will be named Petco Audition. The section for Hyundai will be named Hyundai Audition, or maybe not even Audition, just Hyundai. And those will be the regions. Those will be the region names. So then as I'm going along editing, I'm naming the regions. So I have 20 auditions, 20 regions, and I click Render All Regions, and then each one in gets individually rendered by their region name. And there's also, uh, you can also do naming schemes as you go. There's some really cool 
cool naming situations where you can name it by the number you can so it's like if it's uh if you got three takes of the same thing like uh johnson and johnson take one take two take three instead of putting in take one take two take three and, and naming that region you could just go into the re region section and then say that i want to name everything johnson and johnson and then space and then region number so it'll be johnson and johnson 01 Johnson and Johnson, 02, 03, up until the end. And that that works wonders for those long projects, you know? So, you know, the naming schemes are great. And here's another thing that's amazing is that they save files automatically. Now they're saving your progress as you go. Um, now it's now it's a functional, it has a functional backup system that runs without you knowing it. Now I know people are like, oh, I've got so little space on my computer. I don't want it to be saving without me knowing it. Believe me, you do. Audio files are not that big, you know, 10 megabytes here, 10 megabytes there for the long files, maybe 30 megabytes. Believe me, videos are the ones that take up all the space. And if you don't have space on your computer, the, the investment you should be making is hard drive space. It's huge. We need to need to use hard drive space. But here's the thing about if it's automatically saving your stuff, you have a backup on there and it's a foolproof backup. I have had situations where I thought something went wrong and I just looked back on my dated backup system and just looked for this in... in it's named like renders or something like that. And I go in and I check the date and then I'll probably find the exact one I'm looking for, which is so cool. And uh, here's another cool thing. There's no auto update, but uh, it will give you a message in the beginning to say, if you want to update, go to the website and update. Isn't that cool? You don't have this automated update situation. You, if you, if you want to update, you go ahead and update. If you don't want to, no big deal. And here's another thing, there are built-in plugins. If you're an effects guy, if you're a sound engineer, there are things to change the, the high end, the bass treble, or the bass, or the treble, or there's a compressor and a, an expander. All these limiters, you know, should you need that? And should that be something you want to try? So you can go ahead and do that. Your workflow time will be cut in half. Now here's uh, a little a little uh, delving into what I do every day as an auditioner. I go into my computer. I look at all the auditions that I've got going, whether it be Voices.com, Voice Realm, Voice One Two Three, or any of these other clients that are sending me auditions. I look at all of them, and I start cutting out the ones that are either too low, or they seem like they're too long, or they're too big of a file, or they feel, or it feels like the usage is incorrect, and I cut those out. Get rid of those. And then I record. I go into the studio and I start recording from top to bottom, starting with the auditions. And then I start doing the auditions. And then if I have any redos, I'm still in the recording studio, record those redos. And if I have any jobs, any new jobs that need to get done, I record those as well, all in the same session, right? The same Reaper session. Then I come out, I stop, and I've got my 25 minutes of recording. And then I start to edit, right? I start editing from... Uh, left to right. The leftmost stuff is going to be all those auditions. So I start editing all the auditions. I render all those out. Once I'm done with all the auditions, I render them out, upload them to the sites, listen, and then I send them. Then I've got this whole section that's all the auditions. So, and then I've got sections, sections of auditions. Next will, up, will be redos. So I'll delete all the audition section, and then I start editing the redos. And then I've, then the front of the, front of the file is all the redos. So I, I, uh, edit it, edit through it, then I save that Reaper, that Reaper whole see, Reaper project as a separate file in the job that I'm redoing. And then I uh, uh, render out those files and send the, uh, the redos. Now I've got my redos all, all edited through, and then I've got this big old section that's the new jobs, right? So I delete the redos, and then I've got this section of the new job. So I edit out that section of the new job, save it as a new job in a new folder, Mind you, I have not left Reaper once. I'm just saving it as different files. So I save it as a new job in a new folder. Then I send out the files. So I only go into the recording studio once. I only open Reaper once. And at the end, I have all the auditions files. I have all the redos, redos saved in the correct place that needs to be. And I have the new jobs that I've got to do all put in its right place and sent out. And I don't have to go back into the recording studio. 
But, as you know, you've been probably working for about an hour, there's bound to be a couple auditions that happen in there. What do I do? So make sure that the new job is saved to the right folder, get out of Reaper, and go right back into it again. And then just go go out there and uh, download and start uh, redoing the uh, doing the auditions. And that's how it works. One in, one out, and then whatever I missed, clean up the mess. So in in uh, in conclusion, Reaper is a huge good good software system. And I'll tell you one thing: I would not be saying anything about this Reaper system if Mike Delgadio had not created those Booth Junkie tutorials, which I stand by wholeheartedly, because I've been using Reaper for about I want to say I want to say maybe a year, and I've never looked back, never looked back. I don't even have my Sony Vegas uh, editing editing system on there. I've never looked back. I'm happy as a clam. The the time that I take doing editing and and uh, auditioning is cut not necessarily in half, but at least by 25 to 40 percent, and that's great. And I'm happy with that. So I hope this inspires some of you to get off get off your butts, get off that audacity, and start moving on to Reaper. Only if, now here's the, here's, the, here's the thing, only if you want to do the pay-to-play site grind, you know, because I know it's a pain in the ass and not people, not very many people want to do it, not people, people do it, but if you are the practicer and you're cool with doing 20, 30, 40 auditions a week, and, you know, you've checked on the voice, everything voiceover.com, and I've, I've seen the, I, I right now have been doing uh, videos for the, the numbers of auditions I get per week, and you're doing all these auditions, the, the Reaper will only help you. But if you're not really planning on doing uh, the home studio route, then don't even worry about using Reaper. If you want to go into the studios and do that, and you're a good networker, and you're a good marketer, and you've got a really good demo, then by all means, do that. This is for the people who want to try and learn editing in the fastest way possible, in the best, most efficient way possible, and to do it well. All right, thank you guys so much for listening. My name is Justin D. Torres. Head on over to everythingvoiceover.com. Check out our videos there. We recently have pay-to-play shootouts with all the numbers for auditions for all the big top pay-to-play sites. And, uh, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, follow us on uh, Twitter at everythingv. Uh, once again, thank you guys again. Uh, this has been the Everything Voiceover Podcast. The Everything Voiceover Podcast is brought to you by The Voice Realm, where only professional voice actors are listed. Thank you guys so much for listening. Have a great day.